Hello, Lagos. This is Kojo Lewis. He was born in the 1840s in a, a town somewhere in West Africa. History doesn't know what town. But he was taken, stolen, with about 110 other souls and shipped to the United States of America. He was amongst the last shipment of human cargo on the ship Clothida in 1860. He was stolen, but it wasn't just only his physical being that was stolen. His identity was stolen. He was torn away from his community, from his familyhood. And if you know anything about community and familyhood, then you know what an African identity was. He had his identity stolen. I never met him, as you can imagine. But I'm sure he lived a life of performance below his potential. It would have taken three generations of his children to achieve any sort of performance level that was worthwhile in the United States. He died in, 18, in 1935 at almost 100 years old. He lived in a town called Mobile, Alabama. His real name was Uluwale Koshola. He was taken from a Yoruba-speaking town in West Africa. That was who he was. And who we are is an important asset. And slave trade was one of the most tragic human circumstances in the history of the world. The next human tragedy was colonial rule. And if you know anything about imperial colonial rule, you will know that it is military in its objective, oppressive in its style, and extractive in its purpose. Extractive. It seeks to extract who you are. You know, a very old friend of mine and I were talking one day, I was ruminating, as usual, I do it a lot, ruminating about the problems of Nigeria, the problems of Africa. And he, he just dismissed me. We were talking. He dismissed me and said, Shibor, why do you bother? This is who we are. These failings of Africa and these failings of Nigeria, that's who we are. Well, I said no. No. You know, it's the post-colonial historiographers, historiographers, those people who tell you what you know when you knew it in history, and the postmodern historians who told the world that the narrative that we had all been taught was wrong. We'd been told that we were savage, we were cannibals, we were lazy, we were unable to develop our environment, and as a result, we were consigned to failure. When I was growing up, United States Negroes were ashamed to call themselves anything to do with Africa. They were called black Americans. The terminology African-American is a recent one. Shame was the name Africa. <laughs> Nigeria, forget it. But the truth is, these his historiographers and these historians have now taught us that we had a civilization. We had education, we had universities, we had language, we had literature, we had culture. We were a sophisticated society. This was forbidden, this was forgotten, this was forsaken in our imperial experiment. Another friend of mine, a senior colleague of mine, just this morning told me, but Shukwa, aren't you tired of talking about slave trade and colonial rule? I mean, is that going to answer all our problems? And I said, no, we will never be tired. 
We will never be tired of talking about the consequence of the most tragic experience in humankind on Africa and on our people. Because it's affected our performance. It's affected our performance as a human species. It is the explanation for a lot of our failings. It's not an excuse. It's an explanation. You know, the ancient kingdoms of Nubia, Songhai, Ashanti, and the archaeological findings in Iboku, we didn't know that was us. So I said to my friend, it says, this is who we are. I said, no, that's who we are. We are the sophisticated civilization that had their most important asset stolen. You know, I want you to just imagine a modern day identity thief. You know, he steals your passport, your credit card, your signature, your DOB, your date of birth. You know, he, suddenly you behave in a way, at least on record, that's not you. You show up in places that you didn't go to. You buy and sign up for things that you didn't buy. He gives you a behavior that's not yours. That's what identity theft is. And that's what we suffered with those two tragic occurrences. Identity theft is so dehumanizing that it can't let you perform. Countries that you can see that are high-performing countries, and I'll just pick a couple, Denmark, Norway, Canada, they've not had these disruptions in the last 500 years. No wonder that they perform to the highest level. I'm not providing an excuse. I'm giving you context. You know, there was a, a Dutch explorer in 1668, I think it was, Ote Dapa. He visited the ancient kingdom of Benin, and he wrote in his diary, he said, the roads are seven or eight times wider than the streets of Amsterdam. These people are no less civilized than we are. In 1668, that's who we are. We are not the lazy, undeveloped, impossible to perform writ for Africa. But you know, we have a new enemy. We have a new enemy. The new enemy is the wicked politician. The wicked and unpatriotic politician. The self-serving and greedy public officer and the indolent public, the complacent public, who choose to do nothing about it. Why are they our new enemy? Because right now, we are losing our contemporary identity. Identity is the most important asset in the world. The same friend, very old friend of mine, he's, he torments me. He said, but who cares? After all, we have natural resources in Africa. <laughs> Nigeria is endowed with natural resources. Who cares about who we are? If we work hard to put our natural resources to work, we will perform better. Ah, again I told him, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong because it's now known that natural resources provide only 5% of the world's global wealth. $44 trillion, I told him. The next big item is produced assets, the things that we create, roads, bridges, streets, lampposts, power. They supply 18% of the world's global capital. 77% of the world's capital is intangible. And that's in the people and who they are. That's why we should pay attention to who we are. And who we are is bound up in our history. It's bound up in our identity, our values, 
our sense of community. You know, the things that make countries perform great, the things that make people stand up and go beyond the call of duty is buried in who you are. And we're losing that. It's a dissipating asset. I heard a horror story the other day. A Nigerian state-owned broadcasting organization had run out of newsreel in order to tape some important events and didn't have an approved budget to perform its statutory function. Do you know what it did? It went into the archives and took out some old tapes and taped on top of it. I travel across Africa and I hear that in Gambia, the Gambian Museum has history merely 70 years old. In Uganda, they need 1.2 million naira and 1.2 million dollars to finish their national archives. The Nigerian National Archives website boasts of a stop in their activities because they lack funds. This is appalling because the records, the history, the land registry, the death registry, the newspaper clips, the political parties' records, this is our contemporary history. That's who we are. And that's who our next generation and the next and the next will lean on to find out who they are. But we have no policy. We have no budget. We have a challenge because we feel that government is going to solve all the problems. The problem we have now is too big for government. The private, you and I, the public sector, the private public sector has the solution. We need to insist that any public officer who occupies office has to tell us what he would do with our identity, with our national and collective identity, with the most tangible asset, the most powerful asset that any nation can have, who we are. We have a duty to insist that there is not only just a policy, there's an action. As a community, we need to collect, identify, and believe that this is an asset that is worth keeping. I, my other friend, said to me, you know, all this talk, it really doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, we are going to always underachieve. And the truth is, that's not always who we were in this country. We were high performers. And I believe to unleash that, we have to harness our new and our contemporary and our past and our ancient identity, to weaponize it. And that is the power that nations have. This is Mr. Lewis. His real name was Uluwale Koshola. Good looking guy. He could have been my great, great, great grandfather. It's too late for him. He had his identity stolen. He didn't know who he was. He didn't perform to his optimum. But it's not too late for my great, great grandchildren. Let's help them to know who they are. Thank you for listening.